Okay, thank you once again for tuning in to another episode on Auto Transport for Dummies, where we answer all of your questions for all you dummies out there. We're talking about the top five most common questions people ask when they're getting their car transported. So, number one, far and away, is going to be, can I put items in my vehicle while I'm moving across the country? Everyone wants to pack the car up, you're moving, you're headed to a new city, uh, you're going to load your whole house up in the car and have a car transported, and all over the place you're hearing, oh, you can't do that. Well, you actually can do that. You, it's, you can put items in the vehicle. You can. However, there's just a couple things you need to understand about that situation, okay? Number one, it's going to be nothing you put in that vehicle is covered under the carrier cargo insurance policy. So if you load it all up with TVs and 50 inches and, and all your clothes, just know if there's a total loss, you're not getting your undies back, you're going to have to get a new TV, all right? And number two is going to be that if you're going to load a lot of items in there, like more than a couple boxes, like a couple boxes you can get away with, carrier's probably not going to say anything. I mean, it's whatever. But if it's a lot of items, they're going to probably want an extra 50 or 100 bucks to do it just make sure you clear it with the dispatcher or the truck, the, the actual carrier company moving it. Now, the, again, as I said in other, I've said in other videos, don't go paying an extra fee on a broker site because they, they will not uh, transfer that fee over to the carrier. Uh, the carrier won't ever see it, and they'll show up and still want the extra money. So just make sure you clear it with the actual carrier picking up the vehicle, and all will be well in the world for you all right number two is definitely going to be insurance okay everybody wants to know if i'm in a total lot if i lose my car if the truck flips over in a ditch if there's a small ding am i gonna get what's the situation is the car covered how does that work okay so how trucking insurance works in the auto hauling world is essentially there is something called a motor trucking cargo policy with every single motor carrier that's hauling vehicles. Generally, those policies are in the $100,000 to $250,000 range, and that's what they, they, that they usually will have a $1,000 to $2,500 uh, deductible on the policy. Now, why that's important is because in, in, turn, in, in situations where there's a small nick or a small scratch or something very minor, well, what it means is the carrier is going to have to out of pocket that money. So what I recommend is if you happen to go over the bill of lading on the, the, uh, de at the destination on drop off and you find that there's a small scratch or something, you know, beyond like a, a tiny rock chip, you know, I wouldn't beat the driver up over that. If you just shipped it on an open trailer, 2000 miles, you get, you're going to, I mean, that's why you're shipping it on an open trailer. If you're that concerned, you need to put it on enclosed. However, what I'm saying is, if it's very minor, but it's still somewhat significant, like a small scratch, work it out with the carrier on the arrival of the vehicle. Don't wait and try to think you're going to file a claim. That is probably going to end up going nowhere. So best case is just work it out. Try to get a discount on the rate when you're paying on, uh, on the delivery. Okay, But in terms of a total loss, we always verify that all carriers have to have a $1 million liability policy that is at all times updated on the FMCSA website. Um, and generally the cargo policy is attached to that. It's very easy to verify the policy, but generally speaking, they have a 100 to 250 K cargo policy with a 1000 to $2,500 deductible. And if you're hauling a car with any broker, us or anyone else, you should try to get some of that information, uh, either find it out your like find it yourself through the proper channels, or just have the whoever you're working with get you that information. So, uh, number two, insurance. Does not work. Number three, number three is going to be scheduling. Okay, so we all know the world works on time schedules. It works on time frames. You want to know how quick you can get it picked up, how quick you can get it delivered. When's it going to be here? How long is the transport going to take? All right, so 
I get it. You want to order it on a specific day, like Amazon Prime, and you want it at the, you want to track it. I understand. Unfortunately, this industry is not there yet. So the the best that is really possible at this point is just hoping for a two to three day range, and just being available within that time time frame. And generally speaking, if someone you're working with is even remotely competent, they can make that happen most of the time. But even in our case, sometimes there is a cancellation or a delay or something of the sort. Now, if you want to try to guarantee a specific day, if you want to try to guarantee a specific day, you can try to do it. However, trying to bank your schedule on some kind of guarantee from an online broker, from any trucking company is a bad idea, okay? There's just too many variables that can come up while a car is getting transported. There's too many scandalous operations online that are gonna tell you, promise you this, promise you that. And if you're sitting there banking and booking tickets and airfares and, and trains and everything else over a, a trucking time or a guaranteed date, you're making a big mistake. So best situation overall is get an idea, the date range you're looking for, contact someone competent who can narrow it down to uh, get somewhere close to that and just have an open availability within that range. Now, if you're gonna be leaving and you and, and there's any situation that's possible where you might be gone and the car is still there and you're all freaking out about that, well, the best scenario, the best solution to that that I always recommend in every case is to have a backup plan. Most of the time, if you live in a big city, you know a neighbor or a friend or a relative or a coworker who you can leave the car with for a few days, give them the keys, we can pick up the vehicle from that individual or the company you're working with can do that and that person can sign off in your stead. So that is the solution to that problem. All right, and for number four, it's gonna be carrier vetting. And this is probably the most important aspect of what's going on with the auto transport and what's going on with your transport. You want to make sure your vehicle is going to be shipped by someone competent with somebody with good equipment, somebody who knows what the hell they're doing, okay? And this is where a huge amount of online companies just totally drop the ball. They don't know how to properly vet carriers, okay? There are some nightmare scenarios you can read about online. I'm sure many of you have already been reading through them and you're terrified to ship your car at this point and I totally get it. I've seen everything from box trucks pulling makeshift U-Haul trailers to uh, like Ford Escapes hauling uh, gooseneck trailers, uh, you name it. I've seen it all with the most insane types of vehicles trying to transport commercially. Okay, and what? All right, so the way it works is essentially that every single carrier, auto hauler who has any kind of competency or clue at all is going to be a part of this giant mecha network called Central Dispatch. There are a couple other small ones, but essentially that's where the vast majority of auto transports originate from. Okay, uh, so what that what that uh, system and and commercial enterprise network is is it, it, it's basically an admission to entry so if you have got proper insurance you've got a proper dot number and that sort of thing you can join the network okay but that's like a bare bare minimum that means like a brand new hauler somebody with like whatever equipment equipment isn't even verified uh can just join the network and right away can be getting loads dispatched to them from major brokers. And I know from experience, these major brokers don't do any kind of serious vetting. As long as you've got a DOT and as long as your, your, your insurance is active, well, I'll be darned, you're an auto transport professional and they will send your car out to them. And I am not kidding about this. And they'll also make you fill out enormous carrier packets that are just a total waste of time for everyone. What really needs to be determined is what kind of experience do you have? What kind of equipment do you have? No, they'll waste hours verifying like a DOT number that can be verified in five seconds on the FMCSA website. 
So this is where the person you're hiring to coordinate this transport is either gonna make you money or they're gonna cost you a lot of money, potentially, okay? And this also ties into broker pricing to a small extent because if a broker has two options to ship your car, maybe a higher quality truck with a lot of experience, very good equipment, versus a lower quality truck that's willing to do your, do your transport for a lower rate, Guess what, at the end of the day, you might pay the same price, maybe they quoted you 2,000, but if the higher end carrier wants 1,700 and the lower end wants 100, then guess what option they're probably going to take? It's financially in their interest to send it to the lower end carrier. And that's the way, that, that's one of, the, one of the many reasons why this industry is a mess when it comes to actually uh, serving the consumer, serving the customer and delivering a solid quality product that people can believe in and people can trust in. So that is number four, carrier vetting. That's how these, uh, that's where the trucks come from. That's where the carriers come from. And a lot of things can be verified through the commercial networks, but the person has to have an incentive to actually deliver a reliable and quality uh, carrier to you versus financial incentive to deliver a shitty product. All right, and last and finally, number five is gonna be, is service door to door. I want my car delivered right here to my driveway, okay? I want it right here in the driveway. I get it, everyone wants the car delivered right to their driveway, I understand. But guess what? If you live in downtown Manhattan, if you live on the coastal property side or beach of Miami, Florida, Give me a freaking break. A 53-foot semi is not driving into your little gated community. Not only that, that's where so much damage occurs on auto transports is when these drivers are pushing it because the customers are giving them anxiety. They're like, I have to have it here to my door. Guess what? That's where we've seen the police call because of tree branches getting knocked down, uh, cars getting hit, trucks can't get out of the neighborhood. I one time had to back down uh, a, like, two mile street because a lady told me I could pull into a little park. This park was like built for infants and she thought I could pull a semi truck. It was crazy. You couldn't even pull a pickup truck into this thing and she's telling me you can pull a semi. That's why just do the trucks a favor and if you live in a tight neighborhood go one block away to a Walmart, a Home Depot, a church parking lot, pick up the car and take an Uber or take an Uber back. It's Come on, people, it's 21st century, and honestly, you don't even know what kind of a favor you're doing for that truck driver. You're making his life so much easier, and he will really appreciate it. But again, if you do have to have it to your door, there are ways to do it. The driver can possibly unload it and drive it to you in Uber back, or it can be delivered by a local truck on like a one-car trailer. But uh, and or if you live in a neighborhood like I know for Phoenix, I know very well some of the areas are just huge, so you, you, can, you streets are huge, so you can drive a semi through there. However, just be realistic. Don't believe what you hear online. You're not going to get a, a 53 foot semi into just any street. So just understand that and have a good idea as to where you want to meet. Okay, so that does it for the top five. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Check us out at Midwest Exotic Transport. We have a new site we're launching soon. And uh, anyway, happy hauling.